Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video here. Today, I'm going to show you how to get no recoil on almost any gun in Phantom Forces. Before we start the video, you guys should totally join the Discord. We do lots of cool stuff, and this Friday we're going to even play Among Us, so you guys should definitely join. Now that's out of the way, let's get into the bread and butter of this. Watching this video will not solve recoil for all guns. Some guns just have so much recoil that you can't even possibly control it, like the HK-21, but you can significantly reduce the amount of recoil that's in the gun. This video is a big combination between all my other informational videos, so if you want to watch anything specifically I talk about here, I guarantee it's in the video and the links will probably be in the description down below. I've been asked numerous times on what the best setup is on a certain gun or how to get no recoil whatsoever. Now, the answer to this question is kind of complicated and requires multiple variables to be understood here. If you want the simple answer, <clears throat> DCL 120. I'll discuss that a little bit later, but there are two variables you have to understand so you can understand how recoil works, that makes any sense. Vertical recoil and horizontal recoil. If you're like 10 IQ like me and don't know what vertical or horizontal means, I'll explain it real quick. Vertical means up and down and horizontal means side to side. Go ahead, pause the video, and with the gun you want to have no recoil with, spray the wall and determine its recoil pattern. So we're going to go over three scenarios here. A lot of horizontal recoil, a lot of vertical recoil, and a mixture. Chances are, your gun falls in the mixture. But before I tell you how to fix that, I'm going to have to recite some old videos to get my point across here. There are four attachments we will be looking at today. Compensator, Muzzle Brake, Folding Grip, and Stubby Grip. Compensator reduces horizontal and slightly increases vertical recoil. Muzzle Brake reduces vertical and slightly increases horizontal recoil. Folding grip reduces vertical recoil and also increases horizontal recoil. And stubby grip reduces horizontal recoil and slightly increases vertical recoil. How am I supposed to know what combination I should be using? And let me explain that. The muzzle on the gun has a greater impact on recoil than the grip does because that's what the bullets shoot out of. It's kind of common sense. To find out what attachments you need, take your recoil, look at the more obvious recoil, aka the greater recoil, then put the muzzle that goes with it. So let's say you have more vertical recoil than you do horizontal, put the muzzle brake on it, and then put a stubby grip on it. If that didn't make any sense to you, don't worry. I'm going to throw out an example so you guys might understand me better because I'm pretty bad at conveying my words here. I think a perfect example will be the M16A3 because it has a little bit of both kinds of recoil, both vertical and horizontal which can easily be eliminated if you put the right attachments. The M16A3 has far greater vertical recoil than it does horizontal. So what you would want to do, you want to put a muzzle brake on it because it reduces a large amount of vertical recoil. And then since you put a muzzle brake on it, there's bound to be some horizontal recoil. So, so put a stubby grip on it to remove the horizontal recoil and then boom, you got a no recoil gun. This strategy alone would probably work with most ARs and you know most PDWs. So. If there's one thing to take away from the video is that example right there because you're probably going to be using that the most. We're going to go over some extreme scenarios that might happen that you might run into using weird guns. Alright, scenario number one, the HK-21. This is the first one that comes to mind and I'd say it's probably the first one that comes to anybody's mind when they think about insane recoil. There's the M231. If you ever use the HK, you would understand that it has some crazy horizontal recoil. And if you know anything about controlling horizontal recoil, it's borderline impossible. So what do you do about it? So in order to lessen the recoil, we would use a combination of a compensator and a stubby because they both heavily negate horizontal recoil. Seems like common sense. And you're probably going to ask, well corny, isn't that going to make the vertical recoil go crazy? And the answer is sadly yes. There's really not much you can do about it. I'm going to mention something a little bit later in the video that's going to maybe fix this problem. I don't really use the HK21 that much, don't quote me on it. But there is a potential fix to this problem. I'd rather control a bunch of vertical recoil than horizontal recoil. Scenario number two, the AUG H-Bar. Now you might be asking, well, the AUG H-Bar barely has any recoil at all. Why are you going to mention it? There's not really even a point. To a sense, you're right, but it brings up a perfect example on only having vertical recoil. So for the AUG H-Bar, you would run muzzle brake and folding grip because there's no horizontal recoil. And since there's no horizontal recoil, there's going to be barely any effect on the horizontal recoil on the AUG H-Bar because it's zero, which makes it perfect. So you can run whatever you want on it, folding, muzzle, you can even run a muzzle boost and you'd probably be perfectly fine on it. That's not what I'm really here to talk about. So guns that have high vertical recoil, the only time I would say run double muzzle and folding is if they have no horizontal recoil whatsoever. Because the whole point of this is making it easier for you guys to aim 
and horizontal recoil does not help that. You can control vertical recoil, but I've barely, I've, I don't think I've ever met anybody who can control horizontal recoil, at least effectively. Now that we have all that down, let me sum this section up a little bit. Most likely you won't be using the same type of recoil combination, meaning comp or stubby or muzzle breaker folding that often, but you'll most likely be using two types of recoil interchangeably. So for the next thing, DCL 120, should you use it and why? If you don't know what the DCL 120 is, it's a sight with zero zoom and makes guns almost have no recoil on it. It does have its downside though, it's not good for mobility whatsoever, and it's really, really big. I do not recommend at all using this on an AR or PDW. It pains me to see it. Chances are, after following these instructions, you'll have very, very little amount of recoil. So, putting a DCL 120 on there and crippling your ability to move, I don't think it's just worth it in my opinion. The only type of gun I use this sight on is probably LMGs or very, very high recoil guns. Like so much recoil, you can't even control it. It's like a one burst, like the M1911 conversion of the Thompson. I'd recommend using it with that, but nobody's gonna use that. Now that that's out of the way, just had to get off my chest real quick. We're going on to the last part of the video here. Frames per second. Frames per second is very important if you wanna reduce recoil. I've heard from other people, I use a 60 hertz monitor, but I've heard from other people, the more re the more frames you have, the less recoil you're gonna get. And I assume it's because you can see more frames on your screen rather than having 60 hertz when you're like skipping every, you know, few frames, I guess you could say. Well, with 144 hertz, you can see more per second. Makes sense, I guess, I don't know, but I have a 60 hertz, so I really can't speak on this, but with people that have 144 hertz, use your 144 hertz, get an FPS unlocker and make good use out of it. But anyways, this is probably my most in-depth video I've ever really done, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I wrote a thousand words on a piece of paper to get this video done, just for you guys, all in one day. All right, my fingers hurt, my brain hurts, and now I gotta stream directly after this, so please, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions at all regarding this video, please hit me up on my Discord, I will explain to you perfectly what I mean. But yeah, if you really liked the video and it helped you at all, please hit that like and subscribe button. And yeah, that's really it. So I'm gonna go back to uh, doing nothing now and peace out.